For this project you can download the pedal car manual free of charge. In it you'll find all the plans and materials required for the build. Throughout the episodes we'll be referring to these plans a lot. So print yourself off a copy. Also the templates have to be printed to scale as well. You can find these plans and any other relevant information using the link in the description. We encourage you to watch each episode to learn the skills required. And you can customise it to make it your own. So let's get started. Today we're going to be building this chassis. We've got our two rails, 35 by 19, 1.6 wall, ERW, electric resistance welded. And we're also going to be making our rear axle supports, outriggers, mounting tabs. We'll also be making our steering column support and our front cross member and our gussets as well. For the front of the chassis, we're going to be notching our rails and we also notch our cross member. We relieve them over each other and we'll be welding. This gives you a good strong joint. We're also going to be hole sawing the ends where the steering pivots are and we're also going to be notching to do our bullnose front. That's for our front valance panel. And we're going to be doing nut certs for our radiator shroud. Let's move to the workbench and we'll get started. We've got our raw materials here. We have everything we need for measuring and marking. And over here we've got our plans. This is plan one, drawing one. It's not to scale. It's only a reference. We also have our material cutting list. The top view covers our datum point. From the datum point, we construct everything forward so that later on, when we're actually putting the parts and assembly together, everything will fit squarely and in sequence. We have a side view, we have a front view, a rear view, and we have our parts list. This is our parts list that we're going to be making today. For more detailed information, we'll be referring to our next drawing. Drawing two is done to scale. It has templates, all our lengths, widths, measurements, etc., that we require for all our individual components, parts for the chassis. The plans may appear to be complex and there's a lot of pieces to it. However, to keep it simple, we're going to start with our chassis rails. Part number one, we need two of them. The chassis rails are 1746.5 millimeters long. We're going to be doing cutouts for the cross member, lobster backing and we require a little bit extra so that we can clamp it in the vise and use it as leverage to create that curvature which will meet our template. So let's get measuring and marking. We've got our two chassis rails here. So I'm going to measure and mark both of them at once. That's for accuracy and to also speed up the process. So we've got our engineer square and we'll use that to get our alignment and then tape measure. The length is 1746.5. Then what I do is I use an engineer square. We'll mark it out with the texter. But to get it more accurate, we'll mark it with our scriber so that you can accurately see it. And you mark in the middle of the texter line. The texter is approximately three millimeters wide. So you need to be quite accurate and push down fairly hard with your scriber. Clearly you can see the scribe line. We're up to the cutting stage now, so we can either use a hand hacksaw, pneumatic tools, or we can use electric, cordless, 240 volt, or we also have drop action saws. That includes a band saw, cold saw, or a friction saw. Clamping the piece in the vise, we use soft jaws so it doesn't damage the face of the material. The other thing is also at your clamping point it doesn't crush the tube or the rectangular hollow section. When you are cutting, make sure you've got enough clearance from the vise, but you don't want it out too far, otherwise you'll tend to develop a harmonic vibration. And also, when you're using a vise, the idea is that you have everything set square. The blade, the piece is horizontal. As we start to cut, what I do is I use the end of my thumb to just line it up on our scribe line and the blade is just slightly to the waist side. So you start on a corner and then as you initiate you'll then become more horizontal with your blade and cutting down so that the face or the back side 
you can follow that scribe line. And with an engineer's file, we can finish it off if you're a little bit out. Now we're gonna use our electric cutoff tools. Hearing and eye safety are absolutely essential. Okay, now we're cutting we need to be aware of our rotation direction for our cutoff disc. The other thing is our point of contact should be in line with where we start. Slight downward angle, be aware of your sparks and the direction of travel. Err on the side of caution as far as on your cut line. Just come in maybe like a millimetre or half a millimetre from your cut line. The, uh, the other thing also is when you cut, make sure as a right-hander your strongest hand is holding the head of the machine and your left hand has a firm grip on the tool. Another method we have for cutting material is using a bandsaw. This is a compact, portable, swivel head bandsaw. Great for consistency, accuracy and it will speed up the process, making your life really easy. Now we're ready to use our bandsaw Always make sure, safety first, make sure the machine's unplugged. We also have a sliding stop. Keep this adjusted as close to the material as you possibly can. Correct blade tension. As your blade wears out, it will start to move and wander. Make sure your material is properly clamped and supported. There's also recommended cutting speed and you should use cutting fluid as well to extend the life of your blade. As we're cutting, there's two things we need to do. Number one, apply our cutting fluid. Number two, a little bit of downwards pressure. However, let the blade do the work. Don't force it. Now we've got our chassis rails cut, the next thing we have to do is cut out our templates. On drawing two, we cut our radius template for the bullnose, and we also cut out our marking template that does the notching and lobster backing, and we'll also need the template where we can pull the front bull nose around it. Okay, so we're going to set this up now. Simply apply with magnets. Now we've got our template in position, we just need to double check our measurement. Starting at the datum point back here, 1,480 millimeters to this face right here for the notch out of the cross member. We're going to use a spring center punch and we'll be center punching each of our end points for our cuts all the way along, including our lobster back. So we can also mark the top face with our texture, every single one. Now we've got it all marked out and spring center punched, we can then start to use our engineer's square and mark our top face and then we'll do our front face, our long face and when we cut, do not cut through the piece, we need to only cut down to the bottom face. Now we've marked the top side of our material, our notched cutout for the cross member, we also need to measure and mark the notch on the back face to make sure that we get that correct. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the cutout with our power cutoff saw we're going to be doing the lobster backing with our bandsaw. When we relieve material for our cross member cutout, what we're going to do is we'll come up about two and a half millimetres and we'll do a series of holes across this longitudinal face to relieve the material. The reason being is we use a three millimetre drill bit to drill down. I want to remove material from our waste I don't want to touch our parent metal because when our cross member comes in, it will notch in nice and even and everything will finish square. Now we've drilled out the waste material, we're going to use our power cut off and we're going to do vertical cuts all the way through. Then we'll be removing our waste material.
That's the type of fit that you want. Good snug joint that we can later on weld straight down that face. We're just about to start doing our lobster back cutting now. So we can use a handsaw, we can use a power tool, our cordless grinder, electric grinder, one mil disc so that we're cutting through one mil of material at a time. With our bandsaw, that's also a one mil cut, but we also set our depth stop, making sure that we don't cut through the bottom material. This will give us speed, accuracy, and repeatability. Now we've done our 28 one millimeter cuts, that will allow us enough to bend the tube to suit our radius. You line up the gray section with the cutout, and now you can actually see how much radius we're gonna to need to bend into this tube. Now we're going to cut out our chassis nose bending template from our 19 mil timber board, which is the same thickness as our rectangular hollow section steel tube. So we're going to mark with a pencil and we also need to mark out our notch. This notch is for our quick clamp to pull in with our tube so that we can get a good solid grip on it. And we can cut this with a jigsaw, we can cut it with a band saw, even a hand saw, and then we finish it by sanding. With our bending template on the jig, we mark our notch cutout, which is the gray section here. There's the cutout on the tube. And this is where our bend radius begins. Later, we will cut the tube at this point. That's waste material. We're ready to clamp, bend, and weld. We've got three options for clamping. You could use the side of a table, you could use a vise, or you could use a welding table. We've set up our chassis rail on our welding table. We have a variety of clamps that we've used. The advantage with the welding table is repeatability, consistency, and distortion control, so we can do one or a hundred. We've got our first chassis rail ready to clamp and weld. At this point, you could go ahead and make your second chassis rail. Now we're going to clamp it together. We've got to get our alignment correct. So we have multiple clamps. This is all about distortion control during the process of welding. That's the most critical thing at this point in time. Make sure all these edges fit and are aligned, otherwise we'll weld a twist in it. Before we start welding, if you're not sure, refer to our welding basics video for more information. I've got all my correct PPE on and we've got our fume extraction. I've already tuned the machine for our material thickness and the application, a downhand weld. We're gonna be doing a continuous weld, starting about five millimeters before the first cut and finishing about five millimeters after the last cut. Now we've got both chassis rails welded, we can use our flap disc and sand it nice and smooth for a good finish. Now we've sanded our welds, we're at the last step for the chassis rails. We need to trim our excess, we cut the template, mark it on the steel and we can cut it with a hacksaw or bandsaw or power cut off tool. Now we've finished our chassis rails, we can then go on to the next part. Part number two is our front cross member. We're making one of them. It's 560 millimeters long. We're going to be hole sawing each end with 22 mil hole saw. And we're also going to be doing cutouts for our chassis rails. This is gonna be our front cross member. We need to measure and mark 560 millimeters. We're gonna use a 600 mil ruler, then mark it with our texter and go over the end of the rule with the scribe. While we're here, we're gonna make 
part number 2A, our steering arm pivots, two of 50 millimetres long, 15 mil nominal bore pipe. Now we've got our front cross member at 560 millimetres, we need to mark out our notches for our steering pivots. We use a 22 millimetre hole saw. So to mark out our hole saw, we come in 17 millimetres and we centre punch. Come in 17 millimetres from the other end and centre punch. So between centres, that's 526 millimetres. Now we've marked our centres, we could use our compact drill press or our pedestal drill and go straight to a hole saw and cut straight down. If we're going to do it manually, there's a little more work involved. To manually do this process, what we have to do is get our hole centre, measure in 11 millimetres, mark the 11 millimetres, use our steering pivot to overlay and then we can mark around our steering pivot and we have to repeat the process on the bottom side as well. We've set up our cross member to hole saw. Make sure when you clamp it, the hole saw is not going to hit the edge of the vise. Make sure your vise is correctly clamped. Also your bed is square. Your height, as far as your drill press height, you've got enough clearance. And again, you're not going to run into anything, damage it. Refer to your manufacturer's cutting speed, which is gonna be approximately six to 800 RPM. This is a final step in making our front cross member. We've got to do our notches, reliefs for the chassis rails. We come in 175 millimetres from each end. We do a 19 mil wide cut. We go down 17 and a half mil. But if you're not sure, you can also check using the template, cut it out and overlay it. Now we've got our notching done and our steering pivot ends. We can also just start to fine tune our chassis rails. It needs to sit nice and flush across the top. So when we go to our welding bench later, everything's gonna be level and square. You can see here, we're just gonna have to file another millimeter or so out of it. It's quite critical because at a later stage when we go to weld it together, if this isn't true and square, then we can weld an offset in the chassis or a twist, etc., and that can cause us a lot of problems later on fitting the bodywork. There we go. So we've got both chassis rails now level. So these two parts are almost ready for welding. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll start making all the other cross member components. That's a wrap for episode one. Well done, we've completed the first part of the chassis build. Next time we'll take it up a notch and we'll start welding everything together.